more or less about uh, coffee and uh, what's going on. How y'all doing? It is. It's Thursday. Thursday. I don't even know what day it is anymore. The problem when you're traveling is that everything seems kind of blending in. And today I'm in Salt Lake City. Finally made it out here yesterday. Drove up to Salt Lake um, from Las Vegas. And now I'm in actually a town called South Jordan. And it looks pretty nice here. To be honest with you, like it was a long drive. And I did not... Hold on one second here. Let me see if this thing is going to fit. I did not... Um, I did not get here till like, pretty late. Just fit this on the holder because I have to go... I have to go walking. I've got a new little contra contraption to... For the phone and everything's good everything's good craig good to see you mom how are you doing and kione aloha from uh chrome tap how are you doing down there I just, to be honest with you guys i was uh i got here about i've got here about almost 12 midnight and i was uh you know had to had to you had to do all the nighttime stuff which is basically like ingest all the video into the hard drives. So what I'm doing right now is I have to like check on my batteries, put more. And I thought that I would come and share with you a trip down to the, down to the breakfast bar. Let's go try their coffee. So, like I said, I'm staying at this place called Home Two Suites. That's a Hilton hotel. Nice place. I've stayed at Home Two Suites before. Uh, I stayed at the one in Schaumburg, Illinois last year on New Year's. But it was a, a bit of a long trip. You know, I, I when I was putting it together, I didn't, I just wasn't thinking. It's like, I, I thought it'd be an easy, quick trip, but it turns out it's a pretty long trip to it's a pretty long trip across Vegas to, to Salt Lake City, but I did go see one of my good friends, Annie Ruth and Jeff. Annie Ruth is a, a producer down in El Salvador. She lives down in St. George, Utah. So it's great to hang out with them for a couple hours and their daughter, Nina. So here's the thing. I literally woke up, grabbed the phone, and started the stream. Because I didn't set a time, I didn't set a alarm. I just kind of like got up. I don't know, I just kind of went to bed and woke up. I didn't know what time it was. I just looked at, the, I grabbed the phone, looked at the time, and suddenly it's like 7.59. And I was like, holy smokes. Let me go run. Okay, so we go here at the hotel, and they have morning breakfast, continental breakfast. Let's see what they have here. Oh, they have eggs. They have some breads. Ooh, breakfast sandwich. I'm going to grab a breakfast sandwich. They've got some other stuff. Do you have coffee in the morning? I wonder if they have another one ready. Oh, 
Have a good day. set up here, I'm going to go back and give it a taste. This is one of those things where like, no matter how long I've been doing this YouTube thing, holding up the camera while talking to it always feels, I, I am still a bit self-conscious about that. You know, because you know, people see you and they're like, what's going on with that guy? I guess he must have known that the coffee was out. So he runs and grabs the, a new one. Hold on, hold on one moment. I gotta, before I drop this, I have to open the door. And I don't know. I just thought he would be a little more courteous about saying something. I just thought that was kind of weird. All right, we're back to the room now. And let us see. So what's going on? So the, the drive went well. It was pretty easy to, to make the ride over. But it was just long, it was just long. Like, it turns out it's like almost, four, maybe it means 400 miles, which means it's like a seven hour trip. <laughs> so it took a long time to get there, or to get here. So I left, uh, I left Vegas right around, what time would it be? So th there's actually an hour time difference. So once you cross the, the border into Utah, we jumped to mountain time. So from West Coast time to mountain time is an hour jump. So I arrived there about 1.30 mountain time, which means I left about 11.30, so it was about 11.30 mountain time I left Vegas, and I got here, oh, it took me 12 hours total. I mean, I was in I was in St. George for a couple hours, for a few hours, but a nice time, a nice time. Oh, just, Hoon, how was Vegas? Vegas was great, good to see you, Hoon. We were, I went to um, to the NEB show, it was really good. Got to see a lot of, uh, a lot of people that I know online from YouTube, I don't know if you know a guy named Tom Buck. Got to see Tom and um, Jem Schofield. And then a lot of the bigger YouTubers were there, like you know, a guy that Gerald Undone. I got to see him for a moment. Uh, Josh from uh, Make It Now. Uh, Gene Potato Jet was there. Um, There's a lot. There's a lot of people there. But the people I usually hang out with are, you know, YouTubers and on, our, on a smaller scale. You know, uh, the, in the probably sub 300,000 sub, sub, sub subscribers category. All right, this is their gourmet coffee. Just, you know, batch brewed. How does it taste? Not bad, not bad. I mean, it's, it's you know, a little bit dirty, a little bit defective-y, but nothing terrible. I mean, nothing too horrible. So quite literally, actually, I was saying, I looked at the time, I woke up, still tired, I was thinking, I'm just gonna go back to bed, but I was thinking, what time is it? So I looked at, I got up, because I, I leave the phone away from the bed, so that if, if I, if, in the cases when I do set the alarm, I have to get up. I didn't set the alarm, and so I was looking, I got up, looked at the time, it said 7.59, I was like, oh my gosh. So I just gotta hit the live button, and uh, I'm with you, so, Today we're going to be shooting 
um, with my friend John Piquet. Keone's been here, and we're probably gonna spend maybe two days with him. Just today, today's gonna be more about an observation day to just come shoot, and then really figure out what are we shooting, what are we, I don't know, what what do we need to focus on, and um, you know, questions that I might have for the interview part. Let's look at our little breakfast sandwich. No, not bad. So I'll shoot with with with, uh, with John. John's an old friend of mine, and so it's really it's really going to be a nice a nice relaxed time uh, shooting with him and having coffee with him. Like I, I do believe, and I've been here twice before, but I do think that John Piquet is the best coffee operator in the United States. Like there is, there he, there are very few people that are thinking about coffee executing coffee at his level. And so, so I figured, you know, I've been making all these videos about other places, so I meant I need to include the people that I think are really great in America. And I think the other person that's also thinking really highly, you know, very high level about coffee is um, Brian Lowe of, Mo, of Koana Coffee in uh, Mountain View, Hawaii. Those are the, these are the two places that really are thinking and executing about a coffee on an experiential level. And they're not like, you know, I was, I saw a video from Chris Baca the other day uh, while I was somewhere traveling this trip that was about the Blue Bottle studio experience that they had in Los Angeles, and I think they had one in Kyoto at some point. And I was like, oh, you know, it'd be interesting to go check that out. And so I called up uh, Selena Vigera, who's a friend of mine. She's the the manager of uh, Blue Bottle Venice Beach. And I said, hey, I know she's involved. If you watch Chris Baca's video, she's one of the people preparing coffee in the video. And so I talked to Selena and I was like, hey, are you guys still doing this? Because if so, can I get a reservation? I'm gonna be in Los Angeles in, in May. And she's like, oh no, that's only with six months. And w w so it's like, okay, these are cool experiences, but like most of the, it seems that most people in coffee will do, will try to do these omakase type of things, but they're only doing it on a very limited basis. Whereas people like Brian and John are executing that daily nonstop. It was like when James Hoffman did his Penny University, right? He, you know, he, everyone, people were back then were touting it that, oh, they're doing multiple brew methods, they're doing these high presentations, and it's like, okay, but who's doing it? And they're like, we're going to do it for this pop-up time period, like maybe a month or two. And it's like, well, who's doing this? And I remember talking to James about it, and he's like, well, you know, it's really difficult on the baristas. And I'm like, yeah, but you're only doing it. <laughs> I don't know, I, I just think that, like, if you... It's not like Thomas Keller and, uh, you know, Grant Ackett's and all those guys are, are doing, are executing at a very high level for only a short period of time. Like Rene Redzepi is not just doing it as a short period of time. They're doing it daily, years on end. And I don't know why we're, as a, as a coffee world, we're so reticent to make that kind of commitment. Do we think that there's not enough... I don't know, do we think there's not enough interest in the public or there's not enough support? You know, too expensive? I don't know, I don't know. Keone says, give him my aloha. Don't know if he remembers me though. I'm sure he does, I'm sure he does. He actually, what, I think he, he would actually message me about you. After you had come to visit, he was like, hey, you're a guy with the, that does the tattoos game. Aloha, right on. Because honestly, I didn't tell it that you were coming because I figured, well, let you have the, f let, let it be the natural experience. Which is what I think is important. Like, what I mean by important is that as I go around making videos about coffee places and coffee experiences, I'm usually holding the camera, right? So the camera is always with me and it pretty much will look like this on its daily format, right? 
So I'll have this camera, this microphone, and I'm pretty much talking to whoever I'm talking with like this, or maybe I'm a, I have it on the, the handle that I'm using right now to hold the phone. But a lot of times I'll be talking like this, or maybe I'll have it out here so that as we're talking, you know, I might move around to get a little more dynamism, or maybe I'll move it this way. But I'm always going to be, like if you were the subject, right? If I'm talking to you, I'm gonna be like this most of the time. And just talking, and the nice thing about this particular camera is that it's pretty small, and allows me to hopefully have a, a conversation with the person without the camera being too inobtrusive. Like you, you see, especially at NEB, right? I, I see a lot of the YouTubers that come there. And you know, tech YouTubers love to like make videos. So they're all making tech videos about the tech at NAB. I've got my bag that has my cameras, but I'm not making any videos because I'm just like, well, this is, I shot a little bit because I just want to get some kind of footage in case I decide to use it in some way. But really, I mean, it's, I don't do tech videos, so it's like, well, I don't really have an interest in doing too many things like that. But, you know, these guys are carrying, like, backpacks. Like, this is my bag. It's a sling bag, so fairly compact, and I'll just kind of wear it like this, or just around the sling. It's all open, I don't want it to fall out, but. So I try to keep everything really compact and really easy because, you know, these guys, are they got big rigs, they got, some of them got gimbals, and these cameras with big, like, microphones and big lenses, and it's like, I think people get to be self-conscious, right? I'm self-conscious, like, as, as I walk around, but I think someone that's not doing this daily is gonna be more self-conscious if they have a big camera in their face, you know, like, so by doing this, I think they were getting a little bit more natural interaction. Now, there's still a camera. People are still gonna be very conscious of a camera. And so what I'm leading up to with all this is that when I'm going to different places, I, I'm, I wish, I'm trying to get as raw an experience as a regular person would have, as anybody walking in. And like, even, even in my role as a professional, like people, when I go to a place that I don't know the people, I, I almost will never say that I'm in the coffee business myself. Like, there are many situations in, in the world, especially where people know who I am and they'll somehow recognize me. A lot of places in Japan, because I'm going to a lot of kiss attends that are outside of our specialty coffee sphere, they don't know who I am. And I, and I much prefer that because, you know, and it, I, I'm like this as an operator, right? If I know you, I'm not giving the, the, the average person a necessarily a lesser experience. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to get our staff to deliver the full experience to everyone. But if I know you, it's going to be different, right? The interaction's gonna be a little bit different, probably a little bit more special. And, you know, it just changes. And, I'm, and I would like, ideally, if the videos come out, that they're presenting the place that I'm visiting in as neutral uh, a light as possible so that what you see on the videos can be reflect will be reflected in your experience. And Craig says, meta, Ray-Ban meta camera glasses. I mean, I thought about that, you know. But I don't, I, but here's the thing. I don't like to, and this is what I'm, I would be prone to doing. I don't like to be so inobtrusive that I'm not telling them. Like, and they don't have, and they have no clue. Because I'm not, I'm not doing investigative. <laughs> I'm not doing investigative copy videos. <laughs> You know, um, you know, because I want you know people are going to be some so, somewhat surprised, and they should know. And I do believe they need to know that they're being recorded in some way. So the coffee and the croissant. This is the, your typical, you know, industrialized, baked in an oven, and they did bake it in because it's actually a bit crunchy. It's a little bit flat, so I wonder if they put it like on some kind of panini press to heat it. I mean, 
when you go to these restaurants, these hotels, you never expect to have crazy breakfast. I mean, these are complimentary breakfasts included with their, with their thing. Oh, but I do have uh, something a little more interesting to try. One of the big things about going to Vegas for me, and I, I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday, was that there's a, I'm sure I did, there's a place called Zippy's. And Zippy's is a, is a place from Hawaii that is very important to Hawaii people <laughs> because it is everything you want in food. So they have a place they're called Napoleon's Bakery. Now, it says Napoleon's Bakery, and it really is Napoleon's Bakery, but really it's part of Zippy's, so it, it's all integrated. And so I had, yesterday I had their, uh, their French toast, Hawaiian bread French toast. And the night before, my server, she was like, oh, you know, we actually baked the bread in half. I was like, oh, cool. Right? So it's, I guess they added that to their repertoire at Napoleon's. However, the problem is, is that, you know, I know Hawaiian bread as King's Hawaiian. And King's used to have a coffee shop dining, you know, a diner, a, um, yeah, a little coffee shop diner. I think it was on King Street, South King, and we used to go there all the time, and they'd make these big wedges of of sweet bread, and then French toast it. Man, they were so good. And I think about the Kings; it's very soft and pillowy and chewy, right? I think Zippy's needs to work on that more. It's it was a bit, it was that kind of brioche style, and it was very brioche, and then it was very kind of dry. Like there were parts that weren't fully battered, so. At the very end, there was one part that wasn't fully battered, so it was kind of like, it was just kind of like dry bread. And I was like, oh, oh, man. If they get that hydration better, man, it'd be, it'd be killer, it'd be killer. But that, that was, that was kind of like a little bit disappointing. Kerry says, I just tried the Colombian wash geisha I picked up from, from John, and it was really good. Oh, awesome, awesome. Made espresso with my lapa oh, Excellent. I will, I will tell him, I will tell him. All right, so what are the big things that they have? So the big thing at Napoleon's is the Napple. So this is basically flaky puff pastry with apple filling. Very, very popular in Hawaii. Like, this is like, everybody eats this. So there's one that's apple, one that's coconut. I got the apple one because it's very classic. Actually, I don't normally eat these. Like, I'm not really a big, like, I come from the East Coast, so I'm not really a big apple guy. I mean, I, I guess I should be, but I'm like, uh. I would much rather have other things. But I got this because, you know what, I haven't had it in a long time, so that's good. The other thing that I got that I thought was really good, and this is something that's pretty new, is what they call mochisada. Mochisada, and so there's something from the Portuguese immigrants to Hawaii that's called malasada, and malasada is basically fried dough. Fried dough coated with, um, powder, not powdered sugar, but just regular granulated sugar. Super popular, you probably, if you know anything about Hawaii, you probably heard a place called Leonard's in Honolulu. Very thick, very chewy, very... I'm not a fan, actually, I'm not, I'm, I know I hate to say, I hate to say this, people are gonna hate on me from Hawaii, they're like, what, you don't like Leonard's? I mean, it's not my favorite. Like, if I'm gonna go get molasadas, what is it, is it Laliha, not Laliha? I think it's Kamehameha Bakery that has the poi malasada. I like that. And now I like this. And actually, that's the Zippy's malasada. See, the thing about the lamb, it's really like thick and doughy. Right? I'm not a big fan of, I'm not a big fan of big, thick and doughy. It's like a big hunk of bread that's deep fried, which is for most people fun. But I like the one that they had at Zippy's that my friend that Genevieve ordered the other day. Very light and pillowy, fried with Sugar, I like that better. Now then there's this, the, the mochi sada. So this uses rice flour in the same essence, you know, rice flour, probably sugar, maybe some yeast, and they make it to ball deep fried and then they coat it with this glaze. And it's really good. Actually, I was eating another one last night in the car. So if you've ever had like, it kind of has, the interior texture of, oh, 
I mean, it's supposed to be rice, it's mochi, so it's rice flour. But it kind of has the, if you've ever had like pau, um, pau de queijo from Brazil, where they use tapioca flour, it's got this really chewy interior. It's very similar in that respect. And, and uh, this is, I mean, these are a day old, but they're still nice and chewy. And this, I've been, I ate half of it in the car last night. That's very good. I'm here to say Zippy sometimes have cherry apples. Ooh, cherry apples. I don't have that job. And yes, Kamehameha Bakery's Taro Malasada Soga. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. I love that one. I would like to have that one more. <laughs> My cousin Bob turned me on to that. Okay, now let's try the napple. We'll show you what's happening inside the napple. We're gonna open it up here. So here's the interior. You can see the, the apple flavor. Nice and flaky, right? Nice and flaky. Hmm? Hmm? You know, just like you remember, flaky, classic. You know, the apple's kind of lightly sweet. Mm. That's good. I was thinking yesterday, I'm gonna have to change the thumbnails of all these videos. As the topics are totally, I had no idea what we're gonna talk about until now. So actually, it feels a little bit on the bright side compared when, when eating these items. So, interesting, interesting. But yeah, so we're gonna be shooting today here in Salt Lake City. I'm about, I think about 15 minutes or so south of, or 20 minutes south of um, downtown where Cafe de Bola is located, so I'll be heading there. You see, John said he's gonna get there probably around 9.15, 9.30, so I'll go check it out. Hang out with him and shoot some video. Hopefully we'll get something really good. All right, I guess that's good for now. We gotta, I better run because I, I gotta get there soon. I gotta go. Like I said, I, I really did literally get out of bed, hit the button on the phone to turn it on, look at the time, 7.59, and I had to put on a new shirt. So that took about a minute. So I think we actually got rolling at like 8.02. It's 8 in the morning here, 10, 10 p.m. on the West Coast, on the East Coast. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate seeing all of you guys. Back again tomorrow here in Salt Lake City, or South Jordan, Utah. Oh, and here's one of the interesting things that I saw. As we were at St. George, we went up on top of the one at Buttes, where they used to have the old airport. Looking out over the city, and I, th this is probably something that people in America will find very, like, controversial for me to say, but I was, as I was looking across, and as I'm traveling through St. George, <laughs> as most of you probably are familiar with, Utah was started by the Mormon Church, right? A lot of the Mormon, the LDS members came out here because I guess they were looking for a new land, and Utah is majority Mormon. And because of this, they have, their churches, I believe, are called wards. I used to date a girl that was Mormon, actually two, many years ago. So I, a lot of the details are, you know, lost to my youthful memory. But as I'm looking across, as we're traveling around, you see all these wards, right, these churches. And these churches are, the one thing that they tend to have in common are the spires, these particular style of white spire. At least I seems like they're particular stuff, but there's always, there was a spire, there's always white. And as I said, we're, we're on top of the butte, looking across St. George, something occurred to me, and maybe because this is a, because St. George is not necessarily a mono-religious, this is not a mono, I mean, it's not like there's only one religion here, right? But of course, it's the majority of religion, but as you're looking across and you see all these spires, and you know they're all Mormon wards, the interesting thing to me was that 
it reminds me of the Middle East. It reminds me of Saudi Arabia, of Riyadh, right? Because as you're in Riyadh, there's no place really in Riyadh to like overlook the city, but as you travel through the Riyadh, there's mosques, right? And, and there it's a little bit more extreme because I don't believe that in Saudi Arabia that other religions are allowed to build churches, right? It's only the masjids are there, right? And so, and there's like a masjid in every neighborhood, right? I guess all of these places are kind of like the Catholic church, right? Catholic church built all these parishes and the priests run the parish and then the priest, you know, reports up the hierarchy, but the parishes really are kind of like the local outposts of the Catholic church and they, and, it, and that's the actual one that exerts the power of the church over the people. I'm Catholic, by the way, just in case you're like getting offended. But what I thought was really interesting here in, in a land where it's really majority Muslim, um, majority Mormon, and, it, and I compare that to a place that's majority Muslim, like there's mosques everywhere in Riyadh and there's wards everywhere in St. George. And I was like, oh, it's kind of like being in the Middle East. It's kind of, this is where the, the, the religions, right? Mormonism, Islamism, kind of share some some of that, like you see the, the and I was like, oh, so it's it's kind of, so to me, it, it kind of like, you know, at first when I was in the Saudi Arabia, you kind of like, wow, there's a, more, there's a, a masjid in every, <laughs> like in every neighborhood, you're like, that's kind of strange. But then when I think about it, actually here, it's the same. It's not, I guess it's not terribly strange. Anyway, that's what I was thinking. All right, Keone, have a good one. Craig, good to see you. Mum, good to see you as well. Uh, Hoon, if you're still with us, good to see you. It was great to finally get together with you and meet up. Uh, next time we'll have to hang out more. All right, so hope you have a great one. So long for now from, uh, oh, Braxton, what's going on, man? How are you, man? Oh, I'm sorry, you're dropping, jumping on and we're about to jump out. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're broadcasting from the Home Two Suites in South Jordan, Utah. So hope you all have a great one and uh, see you next time.